So here's where the rubber meets the road. 2014 in February, the protesters seize Kyiv as the president flees. The president of Ukraine is taken out by the people of Ukraine. This is the first crit a critical date. It gives people the opportunity to save the day. Now, if you remember all of the Halliburton stuff that we heard under Bush, when a com country is destabilized and goes to hell in a handbasket, it is a chance for people to do all kinds of things, especially if they partner with the new people. So we made partner of the new president. Now, Halliburton, 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 remember that? Left cared about that, Halliburton, Halliburton, Halliburton. The media was all over George W. Bush. Corruption, corruption, corruption. Why have you not heard anything about what I'm going to show you? So in February 2014, this becomes the new president. Total upheaval. Uh, they have no money. They're completely broke. And here comes the United States of America. In March of that year, President Obama says, we're from the United States government and we're here to help. So he decides, you know who you need? You know who you can need? Because you're very corrupt. This is a very corrupt place, and it is. And we're going to help you, and we got lots of money. We can print it, whatever we want. So we got lots of money. But we've done this before, and we did it with TARP, and we spent all kinds of money. But we wanted to make sure that all of that reinvestment in America was clean, no corruption. And so we put Joe Biden in charge. So Joe is going to be the new point man in Ukraine. Okay, so then Joe, in March of that year, a month later, he has a quick little meeting because his son just started a new business. I love this. He started a new business and he was going to be an investment banker, right? Investment guy. And they were going to do, do all this investment funds and it was going to be fantastic. He has no experience in that. He partners with John Kerry's uh, son and uh, this guy, Devon Archer. This guy is John Kerry's, what was he, is his financial guy. I spent 30 minutes at a chalkboard just talking about this scandal. You can find it at YouTube. You can find it at blazetv.com. It is uh, Joe Biden's scandal in Ukraine, okay? So he meets with Devon Archer. I'm gonna give you this real quick. He meets with Devon Archer nothing to do with Ukraine. And then in April, he flies to Ukraine. And guess what? So does he. And in May of that year, he is made a board member of a gas company called Burisma. And guess who else is made on the board member? Hunter Biden. It is nice, it is cute, and nothing to see here, folks. Like I said, you can get more uh, on that story. But this is pretty much the Biden story. It happens all here. You'll see it a little bit on the timeline, but it's very small. Here's where it gets good. Because this poor country is so corrupt, Barack Obama says, guys, we want to give you some money. We want to give you some money. But I got to tell you, we're going to have to watch over it. Now, let me show you how much money we're talking about. Riding in on the white horse to save the day with all kinds of USA to aid to Ukraine, it included a billion dollar sovereign loan guarantee, $320 million in general assistance, $118 million in equipment training for their security forces, $20 million for new law enforcement reform, and a fleet of advisors in banking and politics and energy and media and human rights. <clears throat> well, they do that in, in May. You give them all kinds of money. And then, because they're so corrupt, we mandate to this corrupt country that they start a national Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine, because we can't trust the guys in the masks. A National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine. It's fantastic. And you know who their partner is? 
us, of course. <laughs> We're not corrupt at all. So the guy who was uh, tapped to be the first director of the Bureau is this guy, Artem, how do you say his name? Sitnik. Sitnik, okay? He's the first director. And what's great is because he is now in charge of anti-corruption, he now has a direct line to the administration to talk about anything, anything the Ukrainians might dig up, okay? Now, we get here. We get now to this place where we are dumping all of that aid in, but we're watching over it because we're responsible. And we were becoming a giant piggy bank. But we made some mistakes early on. Well, first, do you remember, do you remember Burisma? Burisma was uh, run by this guy. This guy is so corrupt that he couldn't come to the United States. He was never to be granted a visa to come to the United States because he's an oligarch. He not only runs Burisma, but he also has a bank. Whoa! So this guy gets the money for Burisma, $1.8 billion. It's put into his bank. I mean, who wouldn't put $1.8 billion in an oligarch, corrupt guy who can't come into the United States, he's so corrupt, who wouldn't put it in that, right? Oopsie. It's like Monopoly. Bank made a banking error. Lost $1.8 billion. Where did it go? Well, he certainly didn't have anything to do with it because somehow or another, he at the same time is given a visa to come to the United States. He's not a bad guy anymore. Woo! Wow. Take a moment just to look at that for a second. Okay. Now, June of 2015, Coming down the, the escalator at Trump Tower is Donald Trump. And he's like, make America great again. Got it? This is a big day, June 15th. By late 2015, we are the Ukrainian piggy bank. We are giving them all kinds of money, but we're also helping them with advisors. Oh, yes, we are. We are helping them with Greg Craig, the former Obama White House counsel. We have Tad Devine, chief strategist for Bernie Sanders, and Tony Podesta, brother to John Podesta. We also have Mark Penn, the chief strategist for Hillary Clinton. John Alazone, Obama campaign pollster. Another guy, John, the Obama campaign lead pollster. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. When you need help, buddy, all you have to do is phone a friend because all of these people are now working in Ukraine for you. You are our man. I cannot stress enough that the climate in Ukraine is all corrupt at this point. This is the climate that the Russia investigation begins in. Not the official investigation led by Robert Mueller. No, no, no. The unofficial investigation launched by none other than the DNC. Now this is really, this is where it gets really interesting. Back in the US in late 2015, while all of this is going on, the Democratic Party decides they're gonna hire Alexandra Chalupa. Taco Bell, I apologize. The only person that could make a chalupa into a bad thing is her. Alexandra Chalupa, she's the daughter of a Ukrainian immigrant. And she began right away after she was hired doing uh, opposition research on Donald Trump. Now remember, late 2015, June, he's coming down the escalator. The Democrats go right to work in Ukraine to find out dirt. Wow, do they have, they have a little machine built there? Or how, do they, how are they digging up dirt? Why would they do this in Ukraine? Here are the documents I want to show you that shows that, yes, she did indeed work. This is from uh, opensecrets.org, that she did work for the DNC. 
and they paid her $71,918. There you see it in the monitor. All right, that's just for her work during the 2016 election. But her work with the DNC goes all the way back to 2004. Now, in January 2016, she starts to, she starts to investigate. And Chalupa approaches an official at the DNC and says, regarding Donald Trump's campaign, I just feel that there's a Russia connection. Oh, you feel that? Wow. How the heck did you feel that? This is in January 2016. At that time, there was nothing out on Manafort, and Manafort wasn't even working for Donald Trump. There was no Steele dossier. George Papadopoulos wasn't on the campaign yet. There was no FISA request, even for Carter Page at this point. So she just, I don't know, maybe she had a Ouija board. Trump, are you S? I don't know. Could be Rush, could be Russia. I don't know, but I have this feeling. Wow. So she goes to work and she concentrates most of her uh, her corruption on, yes, who else? Paul Manafort. She wants to find out all about Paul Manafort. Now, Paul Manafort is somebody that I talked about during the election. I thought he was clearly dirty, okay? However, he was working with the now exited, the guy, remember the guy on the floor? He was trying to, can you grab that for me? He was trying to help this guy get elected. Remember, Obama had this guy. This guy had all of these people right at the other end of the phone. Manafort was trying to get this guy to go back to the election. Interesting enough, all of her energy was focused on Manafort and not the partners that were trying to get this guy elected. Who was trying to get him? Uh, no, no, him too, right? Who else was working on this? We have, oh yeah, here it is, Tad Devine and Tony Podesta. Now that's weird because they were working on the same thing. And, and they, they were in the same bed. And what's really crazy is she only wanted to focus on him. Nothing here. Now the same month that Chalupa was telling the DNC that there was a Russia connection between Manafort and Trump, the Obama White House summoned some people. In fact, what they did is the White House, Obama gave a personal information to the prosecutors in Ukraine. Remember, remember the National Anti-Corruption Bureau? Those guys and like their attorney general, their, their you know, uh, uh, regular police force, if you will, their national police force, was summoned to the White House. And Obama said, what we're going to do is we're going to build cooperation with Ukraine. Your anti-corruption bureau, which is fantastic, headed by this guy. Fantastic. Now, according to a political official at the Ukrainian embassy, the meeting immediately turned to two main issues, Biden and his son, and a case tied to Paul Manafort. You can probably guess which one they didn't investigate and which one they did. The deputy head of the Ukrainian prosecutor general's office said that upon returning back home from the Obama administration meeting in Washington, there was, quote, a clear message about helping the Americans. Regarding the Manafort case, he said, and I quote, yeah, there was a lot of talking uh, about needing help, and then the ledger just appeared in public. What ledger? What are you talking about? I'll get back to that in a second. So, he brings them to the White House. They're concentrating on Paul Manafort. And remember, the White House also, according to sources that were there for this meeting, they also said they were being pressured not to look in to this. But remember, whoopsie, we're not talking about Joe Biden. I don't care what he did. What happened to my and your $1.8 billion? Why did you put it into this bank run by this guy who was totally corrupt, corrupt and then who said, ah, oh, he's not so bad, let him into America? 
after he took or lost. Where did I put that $1.8 billion? Must have left it in his other jacket. We don't want to talk about that? You know, it's funny because one of the things they're saying is they pr that Donald Trump pressured them to look in. What these guys are doing is they're pressuring them not to look at this. But now you've heard the story. Biden, you know, forced the removal of Ukraine's general prosecutor. His name was Viktor Shokin. Okay? A bad guy. Everybody says bad guy. I don't know. He seems like a bad guy and also some good things he was doing. But he was investigating a Ukrainian company that Biden's son was involved with. We all heard both sides of the story. Biden claimed what he did was purely based on Shokin's corrupt conduct and nothing to do with this. Except, you know, one thing that bothers me is this. This meeting. Hmm. This meeting where you sent the people back home and they all said, you didn't want us to look into that. And then Mr. Joe Biden comes in and he gets this guy fired. This is something that's probably worth looking at. This is a document of the sworn statement of the guy Joe Biden got fired that was recently obtained by the investigative journalist John Solomon. John Solomon is a an award-winning investigative journalist that for 30 years worked for the Associated Press, the Washington Post, and the New York Times. He was fine then. He's outed people on both sides of the aisle. But all of a sudden, ho oh, ho, he's a conspiracy kook. This statement was made in a separate court case involving another Ukrainian citizen. We'll get to that. But here's what Shokin states. He said, when he was fired, there had been no complaints about his work and that Biden never specifically accused him of any criminal offenses. He then goes to say on the record in a sworn court statement, and I want to quote the paragraph, the truth is, is that I was forced out because I was leading a wide ranging corruption probe into Burisma Holdings a natural gas firm active in Ukraine, and Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, was a member of the board of directors. I assume Burisma, which was connected with gas extraction, had the support of the vice president, Joe Biden, because his son was on the board of directors, end quote. Now, this is the relationship and power that the Obama administration had over Ukraine. Why? Because we were dumping money, and it was Joe Biden and Barack Obama that were the sugar daddies. Shokin, their equivalent of our attorney general, said that Obama was, quote, telling the heads of the Ukrainian law enforcement system how to investigate and whom to investigate. And Shokin had another unforgivable sin on his record because he launched an investigation. <laughs> I'm... This is, just, this is just comedic at this point. He inv was investigating um, the Anti-Corruption Action Center, and it's spelled C-E-N-T-R-E, -E, so you know it's credible. It's got the fancy foreign center. Mm -hmm. Sokin alleged that the NGO might have improperly diverted or even, dare I say it, embezzled millions of dollars. So wouldn't we really want to know? Because it's our money. Wouldn't this be an unforgivable sin to Obama and Biden? Yeah. Yeah, gosh darn it. If it wasn't that the financiers, the two top financiers of, of that year, uh, are the International Renaissance Foundation and the U.S. government. Now, I've never heard of the International Renaissance Foundation before. So we had to do some investigating. Now, guess, guess who the other main donor is of this group? You got it. George Soros. Spooky dude. You can't do it. Apparently in America or the world, you cannot do a chalkboard without this guy showing up. 
In March 2016, things began to change. Here's what happened. Oh, by the way, uh, in March 2016, he gets fired and, oops, bank made another accounting error. We lost $2.2 million and $1.8 billion in an IMF loan that you and I guaranteed. Where did I put the other $1.8? In March 2016, the good guy takes over. Now, who is the good guy? Lutsenko. He, gets, he takes this guy's place. And everybody in the Obama administration says, he's great. He's the best. This guy bad. This guy good. So he gets in. But wait, there's more. Also, the same month, what happens? But Paul Manafort, like honestly a gift from the gods for the Democrat, decides, you know what? I'm going to go into the Trump team. Bing, ding, ding. They've been setting him up. How did this happen? <sighs> so he goes in the Trump team. Well, they're, they're excited about this, of course. And Chalupa, remember, she's on the Democratic payroll. She starts working directly with the Ukrainian embassy in the U.S. She's working with the staff to raise alarm bells regarding Manafort to the Ukrainian president. She said the embassy, quote, worked directly with reporters researching Trump, Manafort, and Russia to point them, quoting, in the right directions. This is the Ukrainian embassy here in the United States working with a DNC operative. Does any of this sound like what they accused Donald Trump of doing? Working with a DNC operative to damage the Republican candidate for president to influence the election. Now, I said I wouldn't give you any opinions, but do I need to? Chalupa and the DNC deny this, but the Ukrainian embassy political officer who worked there at the time stated that the Ukrainians were indeed working with Chalupa. Here's the quote. They were coordinating an investigation with the Hillary team on Paul Manafort with Alexandra Chalupa. Now, remember, phone a friend anytime you need help. They're all there. Is this that big of a stretch? Especially when you find this, which was released on WikiLeaks, between Chalupa and the former DNC communications director, uh, Luis Miranda. In this email, she just checks in. And she reports, she says, a lot more coming down the pipe. Uh, she went to the uh, Open World Society Forum. I want to read this to you exactly. She went to Library of Congress specifically to talk about Manafort. And she says, they put me on the program, I'm quoting, to speak specifically about Paul Manafort. And I invited Mike Isakoff whom I've been working for, or working with for the past few weeks, and connected him with the Ukrainians. Now, gosh, that sounds familiar. Remember, they're accusing Rudy Giuliani of doing this with John Solomon. Except they don't have things like this. Huh. Uh, I invited Isakov. I've been working with him the past few weeks, connected him to the Ukrainians. More offline tomorrow, since there is a big Trump component you and Lauren need to be aware of that will hit in the next few weeks. Something I'm working on you should be aware of. Now, what's weird is Ivsakov wrote a story for Yahoo News and detailed some of the things in the Steele dossier. The Steele dossier, the leaked dossier, went to Isakov. And then, what's weird is, it also kind of showed up with the FBI, and it was used as corroborating evidence to justify a FISA warrant for Carter Page, you know, so we could find out about Donald Trump. Because remember, this is, this is released, and, they, and the Democrats, at the same time, they hire Fusion GPS to get to the bottom of Donald Trump. One month after the DNC hired Fusion GPS to work on the dossier. Huh. Oh, and by the way, 
Mrs. Orr was working here, and she's married to Bruce Orr, who's with the DOJ, and the little pillow talk. She accidentally said a few things that were coming out of Fusion GPS, which happened to come right out of the DNC with Chalupa. <laughs> and so now he's coming around and going, wait a minute here. Where is the media on this? Where are they? Where, where were they? Where are they now? The DNC was colluding with the Ukrainian embassy to influence our election, but nobody cares. Do you see why the president might be a little testy? Maybe. The work the Ukrainians and the DNC and Chalupa were doing together actually prompted Senator Chuck Grassley to write a letter to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. But, as you might guess, eh, no one is really interested. Nothing happened. Wow. Okay, so here we are. The Isakov member, she's working with the Ukrainian embassy and the press. They've got Fusion GPS. They're starting to move it into the DNC or to the DOJ. And then the, the FBI again says, you know what? You guys are so fantastic. I love your work you're doing or, or not doing, as the case may be. We want an official uh, partnership with you. We want, yeah, wedding bells were heard the FBI and the Anti-Corruption Bureau in Ukraine to work hand in hand. Now, holy cow, now they can share any information back and forth. It's kind of like that wall that you know, we had for 9-11, that wall came down. And now if the Ukrainians had something, get right to them. Okay, so that brings me now to the Black Ledger. Remember we were talking about the Black Ledger here? Trump opposition research and she's like, hey, I got a guy named Paul Manafort. Forget Tony Podesta and Tad Devine and all of that. I got this guy, Manafort. So the black ledger on Manafort was released. And <laughs> you're going to love this. Now, only in the end will you understand. Still at the beginning of this story, but it has a great ending. So the black ledger was released by Ukraine's anti-corruption bureau, both occurring directly in the heat of the U.S. election. Now, the black ledger refers to financial records that were kept by this guy, the former Ukrainian president. He used this for the under-table payments. Now, remember, he's working to get him reelected, and so are these two. So, so Another person that is involved in this is a Ukrainian parliamentary uh, member named uh, Lyshenko, okay? And he is also working, remember the guy who's running the anti-corruption thing? These are the two that put the black ledger together, all right? These two signed a memorandum of understanding with the FBI just months prior they jointly released pages in the letter that showed illegal payments were given to Paul Manafort. Now, this is kind of crazy because on the same day that these guys are nailed, just within days, if not hours, of this coming out and Paul Manafort going to jail, dude, Tony Podesta, who was doing the same thing with the same people in the Black Ledger, he just decides to close his shop. This is one of the the biggest um, uh, firms for lobbying in the United States of America. He's Tony, Tony Podesta is John Podesta's brother. All those Clinton, you know, uh, uh, the Clinton uh, connections and everything. Did I lose my, there it is. Um, all of those things, nobody paid attention. He just decides to retire and close his shop. And nobody questions that. Nobody thinks it's weird, the guy working on the same thing that he gets busted for by these guys, he closes shop the same time. Wow, I'd have a question or two if I were in the media, but I'm not really. Now, some have questioned whether the ledger is even authentic. I'm not gonna do that. 
whether it was forged or not, doesn't change the fact that Manafort had been a target of the DNC and they had been after him with Chalupa for months. The Ukrainian embassy was working with the DNC to get this information. And now, in an absolute surprise, during the U.S. election, the Ukrainian government decides with the anti-corruption guy who's in bed with all of these people that they're going to release that bombshell out of nowhere. Whether the ledger is legit or not doesn't matter. I mean, it matters to Paul Manafort. But it doesn't really matter in this story. The Ukrainian government did this for, for political reasons to sink Donald Trump's campaign. There is absolutely no question about it. <sighs> Y'all caught up? <laughs> is that my head swimming? Because remember, the press will say, nothing to see here. All of this is fact. All of this is backed up with solid reporting, with actual documents. No conspiracy here. These are the documents. But something else happens, okay? At the same time the Black Ledger comes out, Barack Obama decides to announce that there's a new ambassador in town, a new sheriff, and she's going to clean up this town, I'll tell you that right now. She decides to do a couple of things, okay? Lusenko, remember, he's the guy who replaced the corrupt guy. He's actually now sworn in. He's been a temporary guy, but he's now sworn in as the guy we all trust. Except there's a problem, okay? Because he still wants to investigate the missing money. So the new ambassador comes in and she calls Lusenko in for a meeting. And she says, look, there's some people that you just can't prosecute, okay? You can't prosecute people. You can't, well, we don't know the names of the people. They were unnamed uh, Ukrainians. <laughs> but also, you can't prosecute or look into anything here who's the vice president's son works for and John Kerry's uh, son is involved. And you also can't prove, you can't prosecute these people. Why? $1.8 billion, gone. Millions of dollars, gone. Wait, what? This is the U.S. ambassador, the brand new one? She comes in, the first thing she does is call him in and says, you, you have a hard line, none of this. And there's some people too, we don't know who they are, some people too, Mm, that you also can't prosecute, and they're Ukrainian citizens. Wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> she also does one more thing. Late 2016, she says, no visas for you, because he still has prosecutors looking into all of these things. And he just wants to get to the DOJ and our attorney general. So they pack up all of their briefcases with all kinds of papers, uh, and they come up with a few things that they just want to talk to the DOJ and the U.S. Attorney General because remember, they're partners. These guys are partners with the FBI wedding bells. So we should be able to communicate, right? She says, no. No visas for you. No soup for you. And it was really nothing important. There were about five or six things that they wanted to cover. Uh, they wanted to expose that the DNC and Ukrainian officials were gathering tr uh, dirt on Trump. Uh, they wanted to talk about the misappropriation of seven billion dollars of your money. Uh, they had a Ukrainian officials admitting to influencing the U.S. election. Uh, they had records showing Burisma sending three million dollars to Hunter Biden. Uh, they had Biden pressuring Ukraine to fire Shokin because we remember, well, that damn Donald Trump, he pressured another government. They didn't care about this one apparently either. And U.S. officials interfered in the prosecution of cases in the Ukraine. This guy wanted his people to bring these things to our DOJ 
and our Justice Department, and Barack Obama said, no. Well, he didn't. She did by not giving any visas. No soup for you. Now, the next big day. First big day, opportunity. Did they have the opportunity to corrupt things? Did they have the opportunity to investigate and to embezzle money and to wash their hands of that money? Did they have that opportunity? Yes, because of this date, they got involved. This date was pretty important, but this date in November changed everything. This is the second most important day in this timeline, the day Trump wins elections, because nobody thought that was going to happen. These people had all played their hand that Hillary Clinton was going to win. Now Trump wins. Uh-oh. What do we do? Well, I'll show you what they did. In July of 2017, two years ago, the media had the opportunity to begin looking into democratic co corruption in Ukraine when the story was dropped directly at their feet. Sarah Huckabee, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she said during an off-camera briefing on July 12, 2017, these words. Listen. I think if there's been any evidence of collusion in 2016 that's come out at all or been discussed, uh, that's actually happened, it would be between the DNC and the Ukrainian government. Um, I don't often quote the New York Times, but even one of their reporters tweeted earlier today that why this example provides evidence of collusion, quote, cooperation was between DNC officials and officials from the Ukrainian government, not just some associate. Ukrainian actions to coordinate with the DNC was actually successful, unlike anything shown by Don Jr.'s emails. Information passed to the DNC from the Ukrainian government directly targeted members of the Trump campaign in an attempt to undermine it. And that was just Ukraine. Okay. So the incoming White House press secretary alleges that the DNC was colluding with the government of Ukraine. Whew. Not only that, but together they specifically targeted people within the Trump campaign during an election. While this sounds like a scandal that everyone should be worried about or looking at, no, no, this is about Joe Biden and Trump's phone call. Now, if the media had any shred of credibility at all, you would expect this comment to kick off at least one follow-up question. I mean, I'd be knocking people over to get to the microphone and say, excuse me, excuse me, what's this all about? I mean, it would be the first question, right? Following a bombshell comment like that, I gotta prove it or disprove it, tax increases on upper income investment earners. Eh. How much do the CEOs of healthcare industry, how much do they make? Because that was the follow-up question. Yeah, they, they didn't even recognize it. Well, the first person didn't. But the second person, uh, it was about Flynn and Kushner and Sessions and Don Jr.'s Russia contacts. So it, 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 they seem to miss that. I don't know. Selective hearing, perhaps. I have that with my wife sometimes. I have to admit it. Maybe they thought Sarah Huckabee Sanders was their wife. Who knows? The media was hand-delivered an insane story, gift-wrapped in a nice little Tiffany's box. Boom, out. All they could think about was ask about tax increases and then back to Russia. And the media wonders why Trump is losing his mind every time they ask him a question. Okay, so who, 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 was, who, was, who was doing all of this? There are two people that went to jail. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There were two people that were convicted. They haven't gone to jail yet because their case was overturned by a technicality and the prosecutors are retrying it as we speak. Now, who were the people that the Ukrainians decided to uh, take to court for interference in a U.S. election? Wow, that seems like a name we should all know, right? You'll never guess. It was, uh, it was this guy. You, you remember the Black Ledger and Manafort? It's this guy. Oh, my gosh, this guy. Oh, my gosh, this guy's the head of this thing. 
He's going to jail? How ironic, the Anti-Corruption Bureau, the head of that, is corrupt. <laughs> Who would have seen that one coming? Oh, and who's the other guy? Yeah, this guy. They go to court, and they are convicted, found guilty of interfering in our elections. Hmm. Uh, media doesn't cover that here. <laughs> Who would be interested in something like that? So the verdict is guilty, but... The evidence was interesting. First of all, in April, former Prosecutor General Lusenko, the good guy, remember, that came in after the bad guy was taken out? He decides to give an interview with Ukrainian media. And in that interview, he makes a stunning comment. Quote, I don't know how, but the Americans got an audio recording of Mr. How do you say his name? Sitnik of his conversation. Now that's the guy who ran the Anti-Corruption Bureau. He was resting with his family and friends now and discussing how he'd like to help Hillary. Huh. So the guy who was in charge of the Anti-Corruption, they caught him on tape talking about how he'd like to. Well, let me play it for you. Now this is the first time, strange because it's been out in the newspapers in Ukraine. This is the first time that we know of that this has been translated by anyone in the media in English. I just want you to listen. Now, the speaker you're going to hear is Director uh, Sitnik, and this is what he said. Listen. <laughs> Wow, Clinton Foundation. Wow, that seems pretty kind of wow. Now, the only reason why anyone knows about this recording is because of a Ukrainian member of parliament in October of 2017. Borislav Rosenblatt, he filed a claim and said these guys are guilty of interfering uh, with U.S. elections. And, uh, and he had the audio. Ukrainian court agreed. Lushenko appealed the decision. Rosenblatt leaked the audio recording. But despite all of this being big news, front page news in Ukraine, Nobody in the media here cared. They don't care. Hmm. Okay, so then we find this big gap. Almost all of 2018, nothing happens because two things are happening. We're approaching a big date, and it's not this one. Nothing really happens because in the U.S., the Mueller investigation is underway, and in Ukraine, political upheaval is crazy. Okay? 
So people, I think, are kind of in their shell. Nobody's moving because nobody knows what's coming. Remember, they set this whole machine up for Hillary. They set it up for the DNC. Now Trump wins. <laughs> this is coming out, and their guy is becoming unstable. People don't like him there. Holy cow. So nothing really happens during 2018. And then April of, uh, of uh, 20, is it 2018 or 29? Yeah, 2018. In April of 2018, uh, the Mueller report comes out and it's a zero. A zero. That sucks. But you know what happened 11 days later? An atomic bomb. This is what, that is 2019, it's, a, it's April 2019, not 18. Uh, this is when there's new leadership in Ukraine. Now, nobody saw this guy coming, just like nobody saw Donald Trump coming, okay? Nobody thought this was going to happen, and nobody thought this was going to happen. You know who this guy is? This is the guy who is the, he's kind of like the John Stewart of Ukraine. He didn't do any interviews. He didn't say he was going to do anything. He didn't explain any policies. He refused. He doesn't like any of this crap. And he's been on television saying, this is insane. The whole country is corrupt. Well, uh, whether it was a joke or whether he planned on winning, he wins. And nobody sees this. Everybody's like, wait, the comedian is now our president? Yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because all over the world, no matter where you are, people are sick of the lies and the corruption. So they hire him. Now, what's really weird is uh, at the same time, remember this lady? Just a few days later, Trump fires her. And then just a few days later as well, the DOJ investigates the investigation. Because the DOJ is like, wait a minute. She was telling people not to come in with this. We know that this guilty verdict just happened where they're admitting to do it. We lost all of this money. I don't know about you, but I think I would investigate the investigators. I would investigate where did this start? Because it seems to be starting with a chalupa, right? Then in July, this guy decides his ambassador is corrupt as well. And so they both replaced their ambassador. So now the pipeline is clear. Now no one is standing in the way to find out what this man is telling us about. But concentrate on this date. Forget about all this. This is a conspiracy. Concentrate here. Trump made a phone call. Trump made a phone call. You see how this doesn't work? You see how none of this is being talked about? They're talking to you about Joe Biden and his son. Skip, 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 skip. And Trump made a phone call. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. Let's just think about this for a second. Let's just take a minute to think about it. Then... Stu and I think Jason, are you going to join them? No, I'm not sure. Uh, and Howerton are going to join uh, and try to take some of your questions and things. I got more. <laughs> but let me catch my breath. You think about this. Let's spend about two, three minutes just looking at the comments from social media. At this point, I want you to know, I have an investigator that I would really like to hire. You know who it is. Well, you don't know who I'm thinking, but you'd know who this person is, that I think can actually dig. This is stuff that we just dug up. This is stuff that's been in the press, been in the New York Times, been somewhere, but nobody has put it all together. I'd like to hire an investigator because nobody else seems to be interested in this timeline. How this research and this reporting was done comes from our subscribers. And I urge you, if you have, what is it, five bucks a month, nine bucks a month? It's the price of a coffee or two at Starbucks. If you would subscribe to the Blaze TV, we can do more of this, and it's really important. So let me just do a real quick pitch. Please join us at Blaze TV. Just become a team member with us. BlazeTV.com slash Glenn. 
is it Glenn or Beck? Yeah, Glenn. Uh, use the promo code GB20OFF and you'll get 20% off your membership right now. Please do that. Stay in touch and share this. I'm going to, I have more to share with you, so don't go anywhere. I just need to take a break. And while well, I think I have a case of the vapors, am I a little shiny? Maybe take some of the shine off. Give me two minutes. We'll be right back. <laughs> 